All right, hello everyone, and welcome. Welcome to Elf University. Thank you for coming up to spend some quality holiday Christmas time here with everyone, all of us fellow hackers and Santa and the elves. I'm in fact indebted to Santa because he was willing to host and let me speak to all of you here as part of KringleCon. So what I would like to present to you is five steps to build and lead a team of holly jolly hackers. This is all about team building, collaboration, and ultimately growing and sharpening not only your own skill set, but your peers, your friends and family. And that's what we all are. In our hacker community, we're all family, and we're all doing this to improve our overall understanding of security and our security posture. So these steps will be kind of high level in nature, but I do hope to go more into how to actually and actively accomplish these things. So step number zero. The title of this talk is a bit of a falsehood. I actually start at zero and go to five inclusive, so it's actually six, but five steps sounds much cooler in the title than six. So this is step zero because it's a little self-evident. To train a cybersecurity team, you'll need a space for them to work in and grow. So put together infrastructure that both digitally and physically encourages their development. This typically means unfiltered internet, access to a wide range of technology, most notably Windows and Linux, especially Linux, and you'll want to make this space very cool and very hacker-friendly, right? So have toys in there, like a Raspberry Pi, a Ponagachi, a Rubber Ducky, security books and references, etc. Create the environment that fosters people's excitement and interest. And certainly, you want this space to be collaborative. Segregated desks where people aren't working together, that doesn't seem to work as well. You want your peers to tag team problems. You want to be in a room that's kind of close together and friendly and open and inviting with the ability for yourself and your teammates to work together. The real step number one is get your people on a keyboard as fast as you can. That's the first thing you should do, and it should be everything that you do. Everything should be hands-on and interactive. When you're first starting out and building your team of people, trying to recruit new people and get some newcomers engaged, you'll definitely interact with some individuals that have no idea how to use a computer, right? What any of these weird acronyms are, what even is a mouse and a keyboard, that's okay. You want to be open to everyone and not selective, right? You're warm and welcoming. So, get them on a command line, sit beside them, and show that you want to teach them. Walk through each step with them and get them up to speed. You'll end up teaching a lot of concepts at the start, but you can make all of these things really fun and engaging. Personally, I think that active engagement for learning in real time and then reinforcement is an awesome way to teach people things and get these ideas to stick. You should work your hardest to gamify everything. You guys play Capture the Flag, right? So make everything a Capture the Flag. Give your people an opportunity to 1. Learn something, 2. Practice what they learn, and 3. Always be in complete control of what they're learning. Number two, grow a central repository of training material. Put things under your Christmas tree. This can take any kind of form you want, right? It could be a GitHub repo, it could be a list on a whiteboard, anything. But remember, the more dynamic, active, and engaging that that thing is, the better. So, for example, like a web portal. Your team members can have an account, they can interact with everything related to what your team does. Make sure that that central hub is open and accessible to everyone so each team member can add and create their own content. And with that, constantly look out for new events. That way you can pool together all those resources that you might gather from other activities and exercises that you go to. Your priority should be training value. Do everything in your power to share experiences with other people. So, usually that means sending the maximum amount of people possible to some upcoming event. You want to be thirsting for new events. So lurk on the internet, check the pulse for upcoming competitions or events. Stay on top of B-Sides conferences, know when the tickets go on sale, which have CTF competitions available, and try and plan the availability to go to as many of those events as you can. You as a leader should create and develop challenges and training material and make them available to your people and encourage others to do the same. 
once someone breaks the glass ceiling and kind of creates their own custom homemade challenge, suddenly that excitement will spread like wildfire because they'll want to share their challenge with everyone and others will want to make their own challenge. That is the secret to fostering group growth and development. Now you've got this awesome feedback loop of training your people. You train your people, and then you're training your people to train the other people. That's super cool. Step number three, let your team members share their knowledge. Now that everyone's educated and learned up, give them the spotlight. Let them teach. Offer opportunities for each individual to present and showcase tools, techniques, vulnerabilities, exploits, anything. So every Sunday, maybe ping the team's Slack channel. Or tangent, that's step three and a half. Create some kind of Slack or Discord or Mattermost server or any kind of communication method so that you can keep in contact with your team. And then maybe let those veteran members or those individuals that have been around longer Ask them if they're willing to present or demonstrate something. That way, those that have kind of already sharpened their skill set, they're knowledgeable, they can teach and train the other members that might be new to the scene, and that can be anything. Some presentations can be theoretical, some can be very general and just discuss a topic, some could get really deep in the weeds, talk about like cryptography or blind SQL injection attacks, Python programming, or anything. So this gives a bit more life to your practice and helps spread the wealth, right? As one person grows and develops, they can share what they learn and let others grow with them. And just like creating challenges, this sort of thing is contagious. Once people start to see their friends have an opportunity to present, they'll want to present too. Mixed in with that is the intent to keep constant communication. And I mean with worthwhile content, right? You don't want to just kind of be spitting off random articles and email things that you find, but you want to digest and curate what you show and offer to your team. I'd start out practices with kind of what we would fondly refer to as the spiel to pass information, and that would often include timestamps and information from ctftime.org so we can monitor online competitions that were coming up. I'd include information from the Zero Daily Newsletter that HackerOne does, or things that I would catch in a subreddit, like r slash security ctf or r slash netsec. And then at the end of this, if you're doing some kind of announcement section, you want to make sure you open the floor to everyone so that your teammates have a chance to share things too, and do that often. Number four, provide incentive for people to engage and encourage them to. Give praise and publicly recognize those people that work hard. Your central repository for challenges could have a leaderboard where people who solve more of those kind of custom homemade challenges, they could rise up on the scoreboard. Team members who give presentations or write write write-ups, perhaps they could be given more points. When you provide an update, like that spiel or your announcement segment, On a daily or weekly basis, don't hesitate to call out people by name that are doing good work. If someone on your team is consistently willing to give a presentation or showcase something, you want to recognize them. If someone solved a crazy hard challenge in a recent competition that took some, like, unique cyber ninja work, give props to them. If only a few people, like a small number, work on a capture the flag with you, but not all of your teammates do, that's okay. Publicly celebrate the people that do participate, so maybe others will be more likely to join in in the future. Step number five, play. This is the most important step. Actively do it. Actively practice. Play capture the flags, and play so many capture the flags that you, as the leader, start to grow some association with repeat games. Say you've played one CTF before last year, and it comes up again this year. Now, you know the discretion to tell your team, oh, this is going to be a really hard one, I don't know how many we're going to be able to solve, we don't need to put as much time into this, or, hey, this is a really good creative game, there are a ton of awesome challenges, I want you guys to try and solve as many as you can. When a capture the flag competition isn't on, play online war games. 
over the wire, smash the stack, crypto pals, micro corruption, exploit exercises, the holiday hack challenge, ring zero, pwner rank, pwnable KR. The list of practice material just goes on and on. There is so much out there. If the war games are just a little out of reach for some of the newcomers, that's when you build your own homemade content, your own local custom challenges. You can share them in your centralized hub, tell your team about them, and help them work through it. The best benefit of creating your own challenges is that the author is in the same room. You can offer as much help as you see fit, and other people can ask and help learn. All right, so this is the infinity step. Repeat this process. Do this over and over again. This is an iterative thing. I'm sure that you notice none of these steps are like a one-time only thing. This is the pulse or the heartbeat of a cyber team or capture the flag team. You're holly jolly hackers. And when you play, read write-ups. Write write-ups. Track down the solutions and answers that maybe someone else published on their blog or an article online. If you solve a challenge, or someone else on your team does, and not a ton of other people get it, then do a presentation. Share the knowledge. Recreate that challenge, or like a distilled version of it, in your own custom and homemade challenge that, again, is accessible from that team central hub. That's how you improve. Tell your team in your weekly or daily update when write-ups are out and available, and encourage them to go read through them. And ultimately, throughout everything that you do with your team, stretch your people. This is the icing on the cake. A lot of these steps, when you implement them, will inherently mark you as the leader, because you'll be the example for the team. But if you want to hit the next level to keep a team growing, you have to stretch your people and drag them out of their comfort zone. Walk around practice to make sure that people are actively learning, trying new things. They all have something to work on. When a competition comes up that you know has a lot of training value and challenges you're confident your team members can solve, then hold them to it. Push them to solve, say, five challenges, or ten, or fifteen. Keep pushing them to break that glass ceiling and show them the people that are succeeding. So those individuals know, hey, these are the stronger veteran players, those are the kind of more elite hackers, and they know who to latch on to and ask for help if they need it. One thing that we would do is we would actually just create like a cheesy Google Doc, a spreadsheet, where other team members could mark the challenges that they solved. That way there's a visual display of who has done the most work, who can help on a specific challenge, who needs a little bit more assistance, and it provides a kind of like personal feedback or maybe a little bit of accountability so that one person can see how they measure up with their peers and the people they sit beside every day. And maybe that fosters a sense of competition, right? Oh, I can get just one more. I can keep playing. I can keep pushing this. Okay, so this wasn't entirely on target, right? There's no five-step formula for this. It can't be condensed or compressed down. There's no book on how to improve people, and if there were, it wouldn't sell anyway because you guys are all too smart for that. You can't encapsulate what needs to be done to keep people engaged, learning, and growing within cybersecurity. It's, it's a hard problem to solve. But I think we can at least figure out that for each person, it requires constant practice, a platform and a framework to progress in, and some means to feel good when they succeed. That's the most important thing. Keep your people happy, keep them learning, and keep them excited about this stuff. Because this is really cool stuff. Alrighty, so thank you. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you found a few good nuggets. And especially thank you to Santa Claus for having me and hosting this incredible KringleCon 2. Let's go find those two turtle doves. <laughs>